Welcome to another great Cal Basic tutorial. This tutorial set is focused on the Logic Green LGT 8XM chipset, and today looking at um, part 14, which is assembly and uh, assembly alternatives. So, how do you generate a hex file, and what are the tools available? So, we're at the end nearly of this tutorial set, um, part 16, video 14. So over the last uh, set of tutorials, I've been using this nano board, the top left there, the green, and I've used the uh, Uno style board from Wavcat um, on the bottom right there, the big blue one. Both are quite uh, useful, and I've shown some of the great capabilities of the LGT chipset. So let's have a look at you know the, what this video tutorial is about. It's about assemblies and alternatives. How do you generate an assembly, and how do you actually generate the hex file? Um, and I put this Boston diagram together, and this Boston diagram shows three options that I'm going to be using today. And the Boston diagram shows on the left, on the vertical axis, the completeness of the tool chain. So, you know, does it cover the full range of um, capabilities, including the libraries, including the compiler, including the whole thing that we've looked at on the previous tutorial? And then there is the scope of the tool chain, it, it meaning that does it actually um, cover, encompass a total solution? So can you take that um, uh, tool chain and create a solution really easily? So it's ease of use as well as scope. And I put them in this Boston um, Square. You can argue with me um, as much as you like because that's the purpose of these tutorials. Well, let me just introduce the um, different ones in terms of the concepts. The Arduino IDE. Um, I will publish the link down below. Well, that's a pretty complete tool chain and it's pretty ubiquitous. And it would get, in anyone's rating, the, um, the score, you know, the highest score. The products that sell, sell with the Arduino tool chain. They say, go use Arduino. Uh, it's C-based. Some people don't like C, hence we exist. Um, but it is the complete um, solution, and it will find a very great market on the LGT. Coming down from there, there's Great Card Basic, which you've been looking at. Yeah, you know, we can do almost all that Arduino does. Um, it doesn't cover exactly the same. There are certain things the Arduino does. It Arduino does some certain mathematical calculations that we don't see value in. And and we cover, remember, PIX and AVR, where the Arduino code is only for the uh, specific chips it supports. So we're ubiquitous across the microchip 8-bit range, not just the Atmel range in particular. So uh, And our code is portable across your solutions. So you could take the same code, changing one line of code from um, an 80 mega 328p and go to an LGT 328p to a, let me think of something compatible, about the same size, 16F 18855 would be good enough. You could take the code and it would work. And then the third one is called LGD, LGT SDK. It generates a hex file and it has a very, very uh, comprehensive support for the basic chip, but there's no libraries. There are APIs, which I'll show you, but you're going to have to create the whole thing. And the supportability around this is very low. Whereas with Arduino, you've got great support up there, great cloud basic, you've got a great forum, very active forum. LGT SDK. It's very, very lonely world, I'd imagine. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at these three to see how we go about using them. I'm going to create a very simple program to do the same thing. Turn the LED on and off. I'm going to do it in Arduino, LGT, and Great Card Basic. I'm going to do it, try to do it exactly the same thing. And it will take a few minutes on each one. So we're going to do that. In a lab, we're going to create and program the parts up. Okay. So let me just bring up um, my desktop. Uh, we're going to see a bit of a bit of a. There's, there's my desktop operating. Let me just start up. Um, uh, we're going to do Arduino first. Okay. Great thing about Arduino, it's ubiquitous. It's sitting out there in the marketplace. 
and if you follow the link below then um, you'll be able to download the same code took me two hours to find everything half an hour to configure it I got this sample code when I first started looking at this chip and it worked first go once I followed all the instructions the instructions are very ubiquitous and very available so what this does this sets up um, this sets up some very simple piece here it sets up the uh, chip sets the pin mode to, to an output and then does a digital write setting the, the LED high and uh, sets it low every one second so if we look at the lab we have an LED that's flashing if I go back to my desktop I'm going to, I'm going to do my, upload my sketch I've already set up the communications port if I only use this very often up oh, I'm going to verify and compare there we go it's now running it's compiling so have I uploaded it failed now I shall upload it now so add on my desktop there we go it's just programmed that and it has just programmed that you heard it go if you um if I look in here I can see that that's created a program it's uh, programmed it correctly and verified it 1052 bytes which is wonderful really and there's a little LED that's flashing away there if I want to change that in here I will just quickly change that to 500 just to prove that um, everything's working and then we'll go into the next verify that's oh, sorry compile and verify great upload and we should get a flashing LED great 1052 it's flashing faster let's have a look at the SDK from LGT itself this is available from the LGT website um, configuration nightmare undocumented took me a day to sort it all out um, and I've got it running in a virtual machine just so that you know to protect it to keep it stable but it does work okay so I'm going to create a new project I'm going to put it in a directory called y colon that will become evident y in a minute LG LGT I'm going to call this uh, tutorial 14 and I'm going to apply it now what I've got is I can choose my device type my package type and my type of IDE I'm choosing win AVR now what it does it prompts me with a pinout configuration fantastic okay and I'm just going to say this is the chip lock PV5 that's my LED I'm going to click on that and I'm going to tell it to set as an output and turn the LED on which is great because back in here I've got this little user interface here where I can sort of click on things and it's, it's great because this is my API generator so I can say to it in here I would like um, some timers I'll have some timers please oh, I'll include those in my um, program so I've got um, milliseconds microseconds look I've got all these different APIs and I've got a full set of APIs that I can pull in covering power management through to EEPROM. Once I've selected my um, APIs, I then build that initial, initial program. It will take those and bind those into a project that I've uh, now created. And so in here, it gives me a main.c where I can add my code and the rest of the initialization has been done. So I could build an empty program now um, if, I, if I wanted to. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in my code, which I have already written because I'm not stupid. Um, and I'm going to add my code in here. Now, I will just demonstrate how this works. If I type in DRV, you'd have to know all the help. You'd have to go through all the help here to figure this one out. I'll make it a bit larger. It actually does give you a lot of um, inline help in terms of the API that it's actually included for you. So I have said here, 
using the function or the method, the driver GIPO toggle port. Hmm, that's not the same code, is it really? Let's have a look what other APIs we've got in here. Oh, that'll be, that'll be okay. We're gonna to toggle the port and then we're gonna delay it for 1000 milliseconds. Let's um, build that. I get a minor error on the variable and it's built it at 306 bytes, which is fantastic. So it's built me a program. Let's go into um, AVRD because I, this is not part of the installation. So you have to go and figure out all this on your own. I'm just going to load in that program that we've just created, TUT14. There it is, TUT14, and the time matches my computer. TUT14.hex, I'm going to open that up. I'm going to program that, and we'll look at it at the lab. And the lab is now flashing. One second. We'll go back into our little bit of a program here. We'll set that to 100 this time. We'll build it. Go into AVR Dude, program it out to the lab, and we'll see it's flashing. Great. Finally, let's go into uh, Great Car Basic. And uh, we'll go into here. And I'm going to generate a new program. Let me just take one of the existing demos that we had open from yesterday. I'll take the voltmeter. All I'm going to do is take two lines from that piece of code and place it in my new program. I'm going to put a do loop in. I'm going to pulse out, which we saw earlier on in one of the earlier ones, port B.5 for one second and then wait for one second. I'm going to check that my setup is correct. And then I'm going to program it. I have to save it first. Let me just uh, show my desktop. Just going to save that as test. Test. 14 and then I'm going to program it you get the same result in terms of program size um, program size pretty simple um, the program design from great cow basic is um, 308 bytes from the Arduino I think it's 1,034 bytes. It's quite large. Let me just, um, we can look in here to figure that out because I did look earlier on. It's uh, 1,052 bytes. And, 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 the, um, and the one from um, LGT is, what, just over 300. So what you've seen is very, very quickly, you've seen that you can use Arduino. You can use... LGT, you can use Great Cloud Basic. With both Arduino and um, LGT, you can't do this. If I press F7, I'm getting the full listing from, um, this is the this is actual the assembler. So if you wanted to learn assembler, you could learn assembler from this. This is Great Cal Basic, showing you exactly all the assembler and its instructions and how it does it, because it's all documented inside of here. Okay, so we wanted, we wanted to compare, create a program. You can, use, you can use any options. I know which one I would use. I can see which one is the fastest. Your own selection criteria, you need to understand the basics of the language and what you personally prefer. Platform support. Some of them support multiple platforms. platforms. Some of them do, one of them specifically only supports Windows. You should look at the completeness and the scope of that solution. 
Does it do what you want? Are there examples that you can actually use? And then there is the support. How do you get support when you've got a problem? Is it friendly support? Is there any support? Let me reassure you, I've emailed LGT many times and finally I get a response, but I would dread to get any technical support from them. So I wanted to show you some assembly and alternative assemblers so that you can generate that hex file. And I think I've done that. Enjoy.